Hello everybody out there in floss tube world. This is Vicki, AKA the Virginia Stitcher coming to you with my mid-year whip parade for 2023. Today is July 17th of 2023. Imagine that. So I am coming to you a little bit earlier this morning. Uh, I, Mondays are usually busier for me in the afternoons, evenings. So I am shooting this a little earlier. So I have my cup of coffee, my cup of joe here and uh, hopefully I don't spill it. <laughs> I get I'm nervous with having an open container. I'm gonna try to put that far enough away from me. I don't spill it in my craziness that I do. I again have a whole bunch. This is the second half of my whip parade. So this will be part two. I have a whole bunch of stuff piled here on my sofa with me again, just like a couple of days ago. And um, so I'm going to get started. Uh, the first few that I'm going to show you are the things that I have been working on since my last regular floss tube video. <clears throat> I actually just picked this one up and just started working on this one uh, yesterday, uh, last night, watching TV with my husband. So this is my map of Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. Looks like this. So I only have a couple of hours more progress on this um, when I picked it up last night. So this one, I am not sure. This one is being stitched on a piece of 16 count Ada, and I'm not real sure what the color is. It is an over dyed picture, this plus, and it's just kind of a tan colored piece of fabric. And I am stitching it with all the called for DMCs. And I forgot to tell all of you in part one that uh, I stitch everything, everything that I'm gonna show you, I think, yeah, it should be stitched with two threads because I stitch predominantly on 16 count Ada or 28 and 32 count even weave. So this one is being stitched with, like I said, the called for DMCs. Let me get it all the way up where you can see the bottom of his wing. Basically that hawk is the left-hand border. There's just a tiny bit. There's like a little wagon wheel that'll go below his wing there. Um, but when I picked this up last night, and you, I'm sorry for the dangly thread, but got tired and I just stuck my needle in it and said, good night. <laughs> so, good night, Gracie. Um, so, I was working here uh, with the tombstones and stuff. What I actually got done last night was I came and I did this trail, this wooden, wooden, brown trail here. I stitched it, well, it's hard to see. And I stitched the two trees and the trail going to the bridge here. And this is the body of a butterfly. And then I was starting on a tombstone and this is a tombstone angel. Wings started here, the outline. So there is a cemetery right here. And then it works down to like a schoolyard and uh, things like that. So I'm working over here. So this is where I did this. I still have this little house to do here. Um, but I was just filling in here. I felt like picking this one up and doing a little bit more work on this one. So that's where I am on my map of Hawk Run Hollow. Love this piece. The Hawk Run Hollows, just like Prairie Schoolers, they're kind of like comfort stitching to me. They're just classic and they're not difficult. It's straight cross stitch. There's no specialty stitches. There's no one over one. <clears throat> so you can stitch it on Ada very easily. They usually call for DMCs, but I think it's a DMC <clears throat> and NPIs uh, silks, but they have the DMC conversion. So another one, well, the other one that I was working on be out there before I picked up this one last night for the last... I don't know, maybe three nights, three or four nights, I picked up this one. This was a Brenda Key sampler from the sampler company. And this one is called, let me take my note off here. This is uh, Plymouth Sampler. It looks like this. I really got interested in the Brenda Key samplers by watching Lori Schickelon. She is Once Upon a Stitch on uh, Floss Tube. She has stitched a few of these. In fact, I think she's still stitching a couple. And I think she did this one, maybe last year, last year or the year before. This one is one of the smaller samplers. And um, I 
I'm stitching this one on a 16 count Ada in the color ice blue. So it's a very, very light blue color. And I am using the called for DMCs for this one. And I picked this up and I got a house done. Let me make sure I'm showing it to you right side up. So that's where I am. Uh, let me go ahead and fold this one in half. So what I had before was just, I had this border in here, but up to about the B. So I did fill in this and extended this, this border over some more. Uh, filled in some of this. This will be the wharf, a little bit more of the uh, line that goes along the edge of the wharf for the, the there's water right here. And I did this house. So there's quite a bit of stitching. <laughs> it's solid stitching for the whole border is solid stitched because the other, the uh, right side of the border will be exactly the same as this. And the alphabet goes on the top and the bottom all the way across with the fill in. And then there's two more houses and more of the, the wharf and the water here completely filled in. So until you get over to the right hand side, this is all solid stitched, all of this. So when you get over here, it's a little more uh, open area, but for the most part, it, this is solid stitching. And it is fun, it's easy stitching. Uh, so it, I pick things that I don't have to do a lot of brain work to stitch on when I'm in the TV room and it's not too much eye strain. I usually will pick something that's uh, easier for me to see in there because I don't have a ot light in there, but I do have a, a floor lamp that has a reading light off of the side. So I have a light that sits about right here. So I do have it shining down on my work and it gives me good light, but it's not as bright as my ot light here in my craft room. So, um, I do try to pick easier stitches. Plus I'm watching TV or talking to my husband and I don't want to um, be trying to concentrate too hard on what I'm stitching. I want it to be fairly easy. And sometimes I pick things that are just fill in or they're not too hard for me to um, reference. I don't have to reference my chart a whole lot usually. Um, another one that I recently have been working on and I had showed this to you last time. I got a little bit more work done on this one. This one I started um, beginning of June, I think. I don't know, sometime in June. And this is a Remember Me by Teresa Kogut. It's one of her newer pieces. And uh, I had started stitching this one on a piece of 28 Count Lugana and a color called Under the Mistletoe. I got this at Brick City Stitchers in Ocala, uh, Ocala, Florida, when I was down there visiting my mom last summer. And they don't, it didn't say who the dyer was or who the maker of this one is. It doesn't look like an overdyed though. It just looks like this color. So this is Under the Mistletoe, 28 Count Lugana. I am using most of the called fours. I think I only subbed in like one or, couple of the colors I'd showed you last time were a couple of the pinks. I wanted them a little more pink or red color than kind of orangey and they both kind of match too close together so I picked something different. And I, and when I showed it to you last, this is where I am, I had these flowers, this flower border part done up here in the upper left, left hand corner and I had stitched in all of this border work, this inner border. And so this last time when I picked it up for a couple days, I was down here working on this tree and the fence. So that's my newest um, stitching on this piece. It's the tree and the fence. And there, that's some, some fairly easy stitching. That's not real hard. This was kind of a pattern here. And then, you know, it's just filling in you know, three rows with one color, one row in between for the fencing. Let me show it more up close. So fairly easy stitching there, not hard at all. And I had told you since I picked a green fabric instead of a just a really light beige fabric or a whitish fabric, I am filling in this flower. On the chart, it's not filled in. All of this whitish, like a crew looking uh, color off white 
I've stitched that in where it wasn't called to be stitched in, but I wanted my flower to still be lighter and not be greenish. So that's where I am on Remember Me. And a little bit more progress I got done on this one this past week. In the past, I think it's been maybe 10, 12 days since I posted my last regular video. So this is some of the stitching I've been doing in the, told you guys I was gonna get you all up to date as of today on what my stitching progress is and um, along with my whip parade so that uh, you'll be all up to date. And then, uh, cause my next check-in probably won't be till the end of August, first of September. Oops, I gotta put my note back in here. Okay, and this next one is in, um, oh, I didn't tell you, my, my other bag was just a mesh bag. This one is dot dot goose bag. This one is a dot dot goose vinyl fronted bag. But this one has the, this is a Teresa Kogut pattern, and this has the Teresa Kogut fabric. Her, I think it's called For the Love of Nature fabric. I don't know if you can see it down in there. I want to take everything back out of the bag. So that's why this one's in this bag. It's a Teresa Kogut fabric bag. And this is another Teresa Kogut fabric bag. So this one has my Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. So this one's made, this bag's made by So Much To Love off of Etsy. So my Land That I Love from Teresa Kogut looks like this pattern. And this was a mania piece that I was stitching on back in May and I stitched on it some more. And then I stitched on it a little bit more since the last time I showed it to you. So I've actually picked it up again because I'm really kind of wanting to, I started this one maybe two years ago and I'd like to, you know, get more done on this one. Let me lean back. This is where I am on this piece. So when I, in Mania, I came and I completed doing the outline of the border all the way around and it met up to make sure my border was fine. And then I had come down and I was working on this house. I put land that I heart and I started working on this house. So I had this much of the house done when I showed it to you last time, <clears throat> plus all of the stuff that's done at the top. I'm sorry about my throat. Allergies. Um... So I came in and I, I put all these windows in. That way I'm kind of getting where I'm, I'm getting myself set where I could just do fill in. This is one of the pieces I'm planning on taking to my retreat in a couple of days. So I might pull this up and try to get this filled in. And then the other thing I did was I got this cat and dog in down here and this potted plant so far. There's some flowers on this potted plant that aren't in yet. That's where I am on my Land That I Love by Teresa Kogut. And this is being stitched on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color Lamb's Wool. And I am stitching it, um, pretty sure I'm stitching it with all the called for DMCs. Let me look, see if I have my little sheet in here. Yeah, all of the called for DMCs except um, you know, I use a stitch from Stash, so I had switched um, where it says Mariner's Compass. I think I had a skein of Mariner's Compass, but I thought I'm probably going to need more because I stitched with two threads. And uh, this was stitched one over two on 35 count linen, so I thought, let me make sure I have uh, more thread than they call for just in case. So for Mariner's Compass, I put or uh, khaki mocha color that I have. And also the same down here for Fathom, I said, or Gentle Arts uh, Blackboard. Is that Blackboard? Yes. So they're very, very, very similar in color. So some parts of the design I will do in Mariner's Compass, other parts of the design I'll, I'll switch in the khaki mocha color and so on. So that's, but otherwise it's the called for that I'm using on here. But because I use two threads, if I, I always look at my chart when I'm kidding it and <clears throat> see how the model was stitched. And if it says stitched over one, wait, or stitched with one thread over two 
or one over one or however, you know, like sometimes so it'll say one over two on 40 count. And I know I'm working on a 32 count and I'm using two threads. I'll buy double. And I love when designers will also tell you, you know, put you somewhere in here to say how many, like they've said the quantities here. And I love that. So I'll do double. I make sure where it says one, I got two. Where it says two, I have four. And where, I ha where it says three, I got six. And I'd rather have a little too much than not enough. And then, you know, it's already been, I've already been stitching on this one since August of 2021. So it's almost two years since I started stitching on this one. And you see how far I am. So if it takes me another two or three years possibly to finish this one, I don't want to have to try and go buy some of these overdyes, like say Dolphin that I needed three and I only picked up three, but I'm gonna need like one or two more skeins for sure. And um, I pick it up and it, maybe one is a lighter bluer gray and one is a darker almost black gray and they don't match at all. Um, that wouldn't work for my piece. And then I'd be in a little bit of a dilemma trying to figure out how I'm gonna find something that matches close enough. And then I'd be looking all over, uh, trying to figure out what flosses I could try to sub in. So, cause dye lots change. And uh, even for DMCs, I heard that the dyes, um, I think there's new regulations in Europe for dyeing. And DMC is French. I think they're, it's, a, it's a company in France. And I heard that they're gonna be switching some of their dyes. So I know that some people, some floss tubers have said that they've been trying to buy some of the DMCs now that they know they need for a project, making sure they have enough of that color. Cause just in case I, I'm thinking, especially maybe reds or purples, those dye lots seem to vary a whole bunch. So if it's a red color and that is the dye that has to change is one of the variants in their red dyes. So they change it to a different kind and it changes the color slightly. And you're doing a fill-in piece. Like I'll show you, I have Santa of the Forest later. He's got a lot of red DMC on him. If I didn't have enough of that red DMC and I started filling him in somewhere else with a new dye lot and it didn't match, he'd look kind of funny and funky. So always make sure, I always try to make sure I have enough of my floss. Just a tip. So this is another So Much to Love bag. And this one has my, um, this was another one I pulled up and was working on for Mania. It was started in May, a couple of years ago. And this is my Perfect World by The Scarlet House. This is one I don't think I picked up and worked on. Oh, this one got mixed in with the what I've worked on lately. This is in a, on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color Beautiful Beige. And that's where I am. It is so pretty, I love this one. This is another one that once I fill in like a flower down here, I stitch in a flower, I just fill it in and I fill it in with black. So, and I'm just using the the uh, DMC black and I'm getting plenty, very good coverage with DMC black on 16 count Ada, two threads, like I said. So um, this is another one that I like to take and use as a, you know, when I just wanna do some fill in. So when I get tired of filling in with black, I was coming up here and filling in up, up here. And just recently, the recent, the most recent stitching was right in here, up here. This house, the fence, and this tree right here. And I switched this little doggy. I think he was supposed to be black, but this one's gonna be white for my little Molly girl. So it looks like a little goat. <laughs> she kind of is a little goat. A little teeny tiny goat. She only weighs about 12 pounds. She's a... Maltese Yorkie mix, both of my dogs are. And uh, one is white and one is black and white. So um, one of the dogs in here, I'm gonna switch to black and white. Actually, she's a lot more gray and white now. She really doesn't have black on her anymore. She just turned 11 uh, this month. So she's getting up there, a little up there in age. She's turning gray, happens to the best of us. So this next one is in a So Much To Love bag. And, 
Oh, this is one that <clears throat> I started. It's a new start. Um, I don't think I've showed this one to you yet. This one is the Pink House Sampler by Plum Street. I'm not sure whose name I'm gonna put in there. It might be my maternal grandmother. Not sure. <clears throat> but I loved um, this little border down here. is unique in the fact that instead of flowers all the way around, there's little sheep. And then like little Bo Peep <laughs> with her little shepherd's crook. This one I'm stitching on a piece of 28 count Lugana in the color Olympia by F Fiber on a Whim. And I am stitching it with pretty much the called fours except for a couple. Probably ones I didn't have or couldn't get or whatever. So, and I'm stitching two threads, two over two on the 28 count. And I just started down in the the bottom left corner and that's how far I am. So I have two of the sheep pretty much done and a third one's little head. <laughs> I got a little sheepy head right there. So this is where I am on the pink house sampler. And this fabric has like some gray, tan, blue, all modeled together. So love it. And I like Fiber on a whim is, you know, their fabric is nice. Nice nice quality to stitch on. And I can't remember where I picked this one up. I might have got this one. I think I got this one at maybe Salty Yarns. She covers a, carries a variety of fabrics. I know I have a lot of, uh, of you guys that'll ask me, you know, where do you find your all your over-dyed uh, even weave or Ada and I get it off a of one two three stitch or um, there's also companies online you can get some on Etsy I get them all over the place excuse me while I take a coffee break um, this next one is in another so much to love bag you can always tell when they're her bags because she puts a little felt heart Kind of like her insignia on her bags <clears throat> and i love them they're very good quality a little pricey but they're really nice quality bags let love rain by teresa Kogut. i am working on the sampler in here she does have a couple of other pieces in here i love this one somebody i know is stitching this one which has a, a mother teresa quote on it that says, if you want to change the world, go home and love your family. Love it. So this is one I'd like to stitch one day. And then there's this really cute little heart up here. But I am stitching the sampler that is in here. Let me show you the picture inside the book. So I'm stitching this one. A lot of people are stitching this one. This one came out last year, I believe, and at market. And so, me and Cindy, Madeline, and Paula all started this one last April together. And um, I am stitching it with most of the called fours, DMCs, and she has a couple of weeks dye works, but not many. And I am just switching in a couple of the colors. I wanted the blue to be a little bluer. Her blue color was DMC uh, 926, it looks like right here and I which is the gray green medium color I put forget me not by Victorian motto it's a little it's bluer color I wanted my blue to just be a little bluer because I thought the blue color popping out against all of the the tans and the um, kind of beigey colors and all of that to have this blue uh, be a little a little bit bluer so I am actually using the Victorian motto, forget me not, for this one. And I am stitching this on a piece of 28 eight count Lugana in the color ivory. And I am stitching two over two. And I was working on this just recently. I just took this off of the Q-snap so I could show it to you guys. I do stitch usually on a Q-snap. I don't really stitch in hand. 
I don't feel like my stitching is neat enough in hand. I like a tight Q-snap. I like it drawn tight in a Q-snap. So this is where I am with Let Love Rain. I love it. This border can be repetitive. So I'm doing, you know, a couple of flowers, doing some stuff in the middle. Do a, a flower or two, do some stuff in the middle. So I'm almost working my way through the whole top part. Just have some of the border and I'll be all the way down to that second band. Um, but when I turned the corner here, um, when I was stitching on this just a few days ago and I turned the corner, I think, oh, I know what it was. I was putting this multicolored like chain link looking border in. My chain link border bumped into this, uh, the side border here. And I thought, uh-oh, because I looked at the chart and it should be one stitch away. So that means I am two stitches off because it bumped in and I'm, I couldn't put that last stitch in over here. So I kept looking at it and kept looking at it and I cannot figure out where I'm wrong because all I can figure is I've counted wrong here so that when it came around the corner and I, I turned the corner here for this inner border, it's off two stitches because I'm probably off here, two stitches. And I thought, I can't find it. It looks fine. All my flowers look like they line up pretty good. I can't find where I'm two stitches off. I counted all of my stitching all the way along up here and how far each flower is from each side of these kind of like uh, loopy border that goes around them. And I'm like, I cannot find it. And I can't find it, it's not in the corner. And I wanted my corners to match, so I didn't want to come and bring two stitches over and have this look funny because it sticks out, this border sticks out farther than this border. So I looked at my pattern and I've decided I can live with it being two stitches off. Now, when I get to this bottom, the bottom border, when I'm putting this row of flowers at the very bottom of this piece, I'm gonna have to be mindful that I get it to match up. But the only thing that's gonna uh, bump in is this, bump into these side borders is this over here. I'm gonna leave this because I don't wanna frog this whole chain border out that's where you switch in between five or six different colors all the way through here. I don't wanna stick, I don't wanna frog all that out. So I'm going to leave it because I think it's going to look fine. And then the scheme of things, I'm not going to, it's not going to bother me, but so I'm going to do, there's another border. There's some motifs and then there's another one of the, a border just like this. I'm going to do it exactly the same. So they match. I'm going to leave it, the, the stitch off, you know, a couple of stitches off like it is now on this one. Same for that one because it's going to be a repeat. Then I've counted all of the motifs that are inside of this design, and I've noticed that the only thing that comes within two stitches that comes really close um, where it could look off are the butterflies. Oh shoot, I can't show you the chart. But there are some butterflies right here, right here, and then these two right here. If one butterfly's wing will touch the border, the other would be two couple of stitches away. So I thought what I'm gonna do for all of my motifs, the rest of these motifs and things, I'm gonna move everything over to the left, one stitch. So if there's supposed to be, say two spaces here, there will only be one space between the, the uh, butterfly wing and the border. And then it'll, it should be the same here, one stitch away instead of this one being two stitches away and that butterfly touching the border, if that makes sense. So that's how I'm gonna approach this one. I wrote myself a note to move all the motifs one stitch to the left to center them on my boo-boo. Because -boo. <laughs> I don't wanna take all this out. That's just too much work. I can work with it. So just you know some ideas on how you can look at your pieces, study them, you know, because sometimes when I am working on a sampler, there are some stitches that you can't, it's harder to flub. Like I don't like to on uh, fuller coverage pieces like um, like my lavender and lace or mirabilia's. If a, a row is off, a lot of times, I'm afraid it's gonna throw the whole thing off, the whole design. And I will um, 
because they all have to match up because they're all right up against each other. I don't want it looking funky because I'm trying to, and I'm constantly fighting trying to figure out how to get it to fit. A lot of times I won't flub it, flub it in those. I have on occasion, if it's not too bad, and I might take a stitch off of the next row because I had one stitch too much on the previous row or whatever, I can do that and flub it, but um, not always. Let's see, is that all I was working on since the last time I showed you guys these? Yeah, the other thing that I've been working on, I was telling you about um, uh, my Santa of the Forest. He's by Lavender and Lace. I was working on him because I was doing a little bit of Christmas in July stitching. And he looks like these. And I am stitching this one on a piece of 16 count sage slash summer khaki by Zweigart. So he's just on a plain piece of Ada in the color summer khaki. And I have him on a scroll frame because uh, I'm gonna have to loosen him up and scroll him down. But when I was working on him, I was filling in down here. I was doing this. I had this part of his cape done up here. So all of this red is what I've been filling in, was filling in for a couple of days there. Um, I can scroll him down. There's a little bit hiding up in the scroll work. See, and I like my stuff tight. These are, I call these magnetic bungee ties. I order these off of Amazon. They're just stretchy, elastic. Um, they're really cable ties is what they are. They're things to wrangle your cables. But they have a magnet to on each end, a magnet on each end of this rubbery, stretchy part and they magnetize each other and it pulls my fabric tight on the edges. That's just what I use. Let me roll him down a little bit. <clears throat> oh, I'm gonna have to roll the other side too. He's all scrunched up looking. Hold on, Let's see if I can do that with my, I'm gonna take all these magnetic things off. Oh, please, I didn't realize it was gonna be a production to roll him down. And I got a needle right here, secure my needle. So it's not flopping around. Give me one sec. I want to show you all of his beautifulness. I love this this uh, design. So I had started on the bear's face. That was pretty much in the center of the design. So I did a center start on this one. Had all of this part done until I picked it up this time. And then I came and I was working down in the bottom of this cape. If I can get that. So that's... That's my Santa of the Forest by Lavender and Lace. And um, somebody who's been working really diligently on this, oops, let me move my needle, is um, Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher. She has been making a point to monogamous stitch on her Santa of the Forest, and she's been getting lots of progress done on hers. So wanna, if you haven't checked her out, which I'm sure you have, because Almost everybody knows Vonna Pfeiffer, I would think, in the stitching community. She is a wonderful, talented stitcher that does all of those wonderful tutorials on showing you how to finish your projects. So let me sit him over here. And this is, um, I've been asked what frames I use. This is an Arabesca scroll frame. They come in different lengths, widths, and, and lengths. And you can also adjust them to smaller, a little bit smaller, a little bit longer by moving your um, things through the different holes. Get all these magnets and put them up here. So those are what I've been working on in the last like, I don't know, 10, 12 days. So the rest of these are just whips. So another so much to love bag. <clears throat> and this one has my a Savior's Praise by Shakespeare's Peddler. Looks like this. I love this border that is so different. It's not just a standard, you know, flowers or berries all the way around. But quite different. 
This one is being stitched on. It looks like an even weave. It is, the sticker is still on it. A piece of, oh, I didn't bring my glasses over here. 32 count Lugana in the color taupe. I can see without glasses, just not really well. <laughs> <clears throat> I can see it clear across the room. I have 20-20 vision, but I need reading glasses. I just had my eyes checked a couple of weeks ago. They're still 20-20. But I had LASIK uh, over 20 years ago. So this is where I am. Stitching two over two on 32 count taupe Lugana using all of the called for DMCs. I love this piece. It's gonna be gorgeous when it's done. I think I saw one person one time had this finished, but I can't remember who it was. And I'm sure there's more people. Um, I don't know about everybody. But um, hoping to get a lot more progress on that one over the um, year. And this one is in a so much to love bag. And because it has little piggies on it, which to me is farm animal. And there's a piece in here that has farm animals on it. And that is my um, uh, Barbara Anna All Creatures Great and Small. Looks like this. I am stitching it with all of the called for DMCs. They actually call for anchor, but then they have the DMC alternatives, except for the color 3772, um, I'm doing 3779, because um, for the skin, <clears throat> and the skin I'm doing Everlasting by Victorian Motto, because the color they had picked was like a really pink color, very pink. And I thought, I don't want my people to look pink. So I, I switched it. And I am stitching this one on a piece of 32 count Lugana in the color Platinum. And of course, stitching it two over two. And this is where I am. The pigs don't have their eyes yet. But there's something on like a piece of thread, a little fuzz. I, this is so fun. I want to pick this one up again and work on, there's a cow down here. Oh, all the little motifs. Just so fun. You get a fun, cute little motif done. And look, he looks like, like he could be off the Adams family, like cousin it as a little baby. <laughs> oh my goodness. Cracks me up. <clears throat> Little bald baby down there. Big eyes. Uh, the next one is my His Eyes on the Sparrow by Heartstring Samplery. It is in a Creative Country Girl bag by Tammy Blaylock. Picked this up at the Still City Stitchers Retreat at the Crafty Used Pop-Up Shop that they had. I believe that's where. It's either that or StitchCon at their annex. And this is uh, His Eyes on the Sparrow. Haven't worked on this one in the past couple of weeks. I am stitching this one on a piece of 32 count vintage country mocha Lugana. With most of the called for overdides, so I had a switched in. Let me see if I can, am I showing you right side? Yeah, this is the back side. And this is where I am, I have to lean back here on his eyes on the sparrow. And fold it, bring the main stitching up closer. So, I am loving this piece. I've taken a little bit of a break from it um, lately. I've been working on a couple of other things, but 
because I think why is I've done all of the motifs on this side. So now they're kind of repeated, but in a little bit different color scheme on the other side. So I'm getting into the repeats. I kind of slowed down a little bit, but I will, you know, finish them, of course. I don't know what you can see. And I was trying to start bringing the border down, as you can see over here on the side. So, and I have already in my stash consider the lilies. Because who knows? I won't start that one. At least I say I won't until I finished this one because um, one of these big motify kind of samplers is enough at a time. These huge ones like this. I don't need to have both going at the same time. I'd never get either of them finished. I don't like this scroll frame one sitting here getting buried. Hold on, because it's pushing on my piece, my fabric. I'm gonna stick it over here. Okay, uh, this this one is in a bag made by um, Stitching with Grammy, uh, Barbara Johns. It's a, a large bag with um, a nice handle on it. And this one has my Hawk Run, Houses of Hawk Run Hollow. Where, where is actually my project? I put it inside the plastic bag for some reason. My goodness, baby. This actually is my houses slash um, village of Hawk Run Hollow. I'm doing a mishmash. Let me see if I can show you the piece that I put together. Where is it? I'm going to crinkle that too much in you guys' ear. There's the one. I am not too organized, am I? Let me, um, it's in here. I know it is. Oh, here we go. What I did, let me show you real quick. This is the houses of Hawk Run. I didn't want like this wordy block down here. I think there was a couple more that I just wasn't real keen on, on this one. And then the village of Hawk Run, same thing. This one has a lot of words on it. This one has a lot of words on it. And I thought, I'm just gonna mix, and this one has a graveyard. Didn't necessarily want the graveyard on there for sure. So I took a few from each. <clears throat> I copied and pasted. I copied, I cut out and I pasted on a piece of paper. I did a grid and I took these little squares and I moved them around. You know, I, I selected which ones I wanted in which order that I wanted to do them on my piece of fabric. And then I listed that. This is house number one um, from houses. This one's from village, uh, village of Hawk Run, village of Hawk Run, village, house, village. You know, so there's, I think, I don't know, maybe five houses and seven villages on here. <laughs> <clears throat> Motifs. And, uh. I am stitching this one on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color aged paper by coloring cotton. And just like I had told you before on my other Hawk runs, I have gone and I've gridded it all in. So I have all 12 blocks gridded in. I'm gonna be closer to the camera today because I'm having to lean way back to show you guys the whole piece of some of these. <clears throat> and I did Opal's Boarding House. And I still have a dangly thread with a needle on it. And I had started on this block next to it, which actually is from the houses of Hawk Run. Opal's boarding house is from Village of Hawk Run. It's block number four. And this is the houses of Hawk Run. And it is uh, house number two on this yeah, pattern. So that's where I am on this one. This one's, uh, I think, one of the more recent Hawk Runs that I started, I think. 
so I'm not too far in on this one. And it doesn't mean that I won't maybe at some point stitch some of these other blocks or you know make make a pillow with them, make an accent piece. Who knows? It's just that's what I wanted to do with these all together right now. That's just how I wanted to um, tackle this one. Alrighty. Oh, it looks like now I'm to my, um, let me do this one. Those are my hands across the sea. This is a so much more to love bag. I have a few of these, they have the gusseted bottom, so they hold a lot. I put multiple uh, pieces in um, each one. This one I know houses my two hands across the sea samplers that I have on the go. And one that you've seen recently, I've worked on her a little bit recently. I'm trying to plug away at her kind of consistently because she is huge. And that is Elizabeth Weston, circa 1830, by Hands Across the Sea. It looks like this. Started up here in the left-hand corner. So I did pick this up and I worked on it a little bit more. This is one I've worked on since I last showed it to you guys, but not that much more, just a little bit. And this is being stitched on a piece of 32 count Lugana in the color stone gray. It's a piece of fabric I picked up at Salty Yarns that I had cut for her. The only thing is, is I, uh, when I was telling the lady at the cutting table how big I wanted my piece cut, um, then she tacked on another three inches on each side for the border. So I actually have a six inch border on this one. So I have quite a border, so I know I'm gonna have plenty of room to be able to frame this one. And let me let me half this. This is a bed sheet, because she's a big, I wanna say she's probably my biggest project I've got going right now. So let me see if I can, I can't see what you guys can see. Ugh. Okay, I think that's hopefully showing you all of what I have stitched. So this is where I am on Elizabeth Weston, my hands across the sea, stitching her two over two with the called for DMC. She, it comes with three different um, options. They give you a chart, a thing like this, looks like a little bookmark. So it's charted for Soitage, DMC, and NPIs. So the other two are silks, but I'm doing the DMC. I'm doing the DMC conversion for her. And when I picked her up last, I was filling in, I filled in the leaves, all of these little flower things here in this section. And I put another uh, little bit of wording because there's some one over one wording there. So I got in myself to you and F <laughs> for the next line. But, um, it is looking gorgeous. I love her. She is a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful lady. Beautiful. Um, so I've got her border um, done where I've turned the corner. So that's how wide she is. And this is just the top section, which goes to here. And you can't, on their fabric in the picture anyway, you can't really see the lighter colors like the basket that's in here. There's a couple of, two other little small baskets that I still need to put in there. And I've done this flower here. So this is the top section that I'm working on. And then the, the bottom section is larger and kind of divided into two. So, and the basket that you can barely see because I chose a darker fabric because I wanted the lighter colors to show up. They show up on this one. And like I said, there's another tiny little basket, a smaller basket on either side of this with a little flower, I think, in them. Or are they just baskets? <clears throat> it's hard to see because like I said, some of it doesn't show up on the picture. So you'll see her for a few years. <laughs> I am not a monogamous stitcher. I have plans to try to work on her um, fairly regularly so that she's not just sitting um, and taking me 
15 years to do. I want to, you know, get good work on her each year is my plan. The other hands across the sea I have, because I've been concentrating on my Elizabeth Weston, I have not um, worked on this one lately. So there's been no progress on this lady. And this is Mrs. Campbell, my hands across the sea. I liked it because I, I thought all these hearts, it's just so pretty. So uh, I'm stitching this one on a piece of Fortnite fabrics in the co color Winter Forest in 32 count Lugana. And I think I'm stitching this one with the called for DMCs. Yeah, I'm not using the, this one gets, is charted in uh, the uh, 103 silks, the Soitages and the um, DMC. <clears throat> so I'm doing DMC and I didn't got, get very far. I just got to start on this one. Let me see if I got it going the right way. I think it goes this way. So this is kind of like a, almost like a little chain looking. It's got some back stitching in it, the border there. And then I started one heart. I got one in. So maybe it goes this way. I don't know. Because she is long, wider than she is long. So it probably goes this direction. I'm not sure. Anyways, that's where she is. Or maybe I'm only using half of this piece of fabric. Who knows? But I, because I haven't touched her in a while, I can't remember. <laughs> um, I started her probably over a year ago and I haven't made any more progress on her since. Doesn't mean I don't wanna finish her. It's just I'm focusing more on Elizabeth Weston. But they're both, they, both of these ladies are sitting in this bag together. <clears throat> and this, like I said, is like a bed sheet. This is crazy, crazy amount of fabric there. <clears throat> so I have both of these ladies in my So Much to Love bag. That's um, so much more to love because it can hold quite a bit. And then in my other So Much More to Love bags, I have uh, my fancy folk. I showed my, you my Santa of the Forest. Um, this next one in here, this bag, um, I put all of my kind of more winter ones. So my Santa of the Forest is in here. And also I have, um, hopefully that won't glare too much. My winter, ho uh, my Holiday Queen by Mirabilia. I'm stitching her on a piece of, uh, 28 count Lugana in the color Gingerbread. I copied Heidi from Stitching Fay. She finished this lady and she did her on this gingerbread and it is so pretty. So this is my start. She goes this direction. Started the center and working my way down. So I'm working center down. So this is just part of her skirt. Doesn't look like much right now. And of course I'll do beading last. So there are spaces in the design where beads will go, where there'll be empty stitches. So that's my uh, Royal Holiday. Started her at the beginning of the year. I think I started her in January. She was one of my, my new year new starts. And I have, I have Winter Queen in here. I've had an issue with Winter Queen. I started her with Carolyn of Carolyn Stitches on floss tube. Sorry for the crinkle, but I'm gonna take her out because I've got, um, she's very light colored and they show her on a white fabric. And the lighter the fabric, the more I, these stitches to me are getting lost. Now I know they use a little bit of back stitching and stuff to try to um, make the finished piece stand out and you can see there's probably a little bit of back stitching going along here on her little white furry edge of her dress so i had started her on a piece of fabric and i did not like how she was turning out so she's not really a whip right now she's going to be a restart and i might restart her in the winter you know um and try again on this piece of light blue 32 count lagana that's my thinking. 
because the main color of her dress is in this DMC color. So I think that'll still show up, but the whites will show up also. So we'll see. Um, I was just having, I've been having a, I think I've started her twice now. I get a start on her and it's not looking right. I'm not liking how it's, the stitches are laying on the fabric or how they're showing up on the fabric. And so I've just tried her, I tried her on a mop, I tried her on a uh, really, it was called Cardinal by Be Stitch Me Lugana piece that I had from her uh, club that I was in. And that's kind of a bright pinky color. And I, I just was like, man, I don't think I like that one either. I don't have that piece to show you. I think I already put it back in my stash. So that lady's in there, but she's gonna be a restart. She's not, she doesn't have anything done on her right now. And then this other So Much To Love bag, So Much More To Love bag has cardinals on it. <clears throat> and this one has all of my fall, what kind of fall, and I throw other ones in there. Cause I'm like, if I wanna divide these up and uh, start on them in the season or work on them in the seasons, that's how I divided them. And this one is Raven Queen by Mirabilia. Started her just recently, April maybe. Not too long ago. And I'm doing her on a piece of Seraphim fabrics. Is this Seraphim? No, under the sea fabrics in a color called Tulips Sunrise. And it is a 32 count Lugana. Pick this up at one of my retreats. And I am this far. So I started on the bodice of her dress. So I just got that much start on her. I think I worked a couple days, got that start. That's it. But I'm loving how her colors are showing up on this fabric. Um, so, I'm going to continue on that fabric. Every now and then I find a fabric that I like and it works, but because sometimes I try to think out of the outside of the box and it doesn't work. Sometimes I'm like, oh, that yeah, that's that's not working for me. Um, sometimes I look okay. But if I'm going to be working on it and I uh, continue to work on it and want to love my end product, I want to make sure I'm in love with the way it's looking. So this next one is another one of the Queens by Mirabilia. Since I have to take the... She is the Autumn Queen. She looks like this. I was gifted this one from a couple of... Uh, uh, a young lady and her dad knew I was looking for this one and they found it and got it for me, um, which was so sweet of them. And I'm stitching this one on a piece of 32 count Lugana in the color wheat. I have some of the whisper thread in here fell out. And I started a top start, a top middle start. So I started at her head and this is where I am on Autumn Queen. I actually thought I was farther along on her. I thought I was down in her skirt, but I guess I'm not. <laughs> oh, goodness. So I, I like, you know, I wanted to just, I wanted to get her face done. And I, I kind of like that. I should start all of my ladies that way because to me, you can tell what it is. Um, when I start down on the skirt, like I did with, um, uh, which one is it? When I was just showing you. Oh, uh, Royal Holiday. Uh, it's hard to tell even what it is. It's like, oh, it's just part of her dress. But when you get the head in of the lady, you can you can kind of see it. You can picture it. You can picture what it's looking like. That wisp of thread back in there. Uh, I think there's one more lady in this bag. And then I just have them all separated. Their, oops, their chart with their, the project, and any specialty beads. Um, this one has a couple of specialty beads and the whisper in with it, whisper thread. They're all the regular beads, the little Mill Hill beads, I'm um, not the treasures. I have them all um, organized in my stash together so I can see at a glance what beads I have and which ones I don't. Now this one is a Bella Filipina. And she is La Capate. I hope I'm saying that right. 
and I started her on a really dark green piece of fabric. Really dark. And the uh, stitching was kind of tight in there in the because of the over dyeing process. And I didn't wasn't sure how the beads were gonna lay for her. So I restarted her, plus it was so dark that I kind of felt like I was gonna lose like her hair. And it was a green color, but it was very, very it was even darker than this one. Um, I, oh, I have it right here. I only started on her, this is what I started her on. And the yellows look fantabulous on it. Uh, but, Uh, I, you know, like I said, I didn't think the rest of her was going to show up and the stitching was kind of tight. So and I don't even know what direction. I think it goes in this direction, but that's just part of her dress. And the colors are really nice on there. I think it's a little bit darker and a little bit tighter of a weave to the fabric. And so I was getting nervous about the beads being able to fit. Because one thing you have to consider, you want to stay close to the size that's recommended on the pattern. If it's calling for a 28 count, you want to stay closer to a 28 count. If it's calling for a 32 count, you can do a 32 to a 28. A lot of familiar mirabilia is a 14 to 16 count or a 32, 28 and 32 count on even weave. But um, because the beads are a certain size and she has some large beads in her. She has bugle beads. She has all kinds of different beads. So I didn't want to be fighting with the beads at the end of it. So I picked this piece of 32 count Lugana by Atomic Ranch in the color Eucalyptus. And I got this far on her. So the colors are still popping, but I know the browns and like the darker colors in her hair, her black browns in her hair are gonna show up um, still on this because also there's a beautiful beaded border. Well, it's partly beaded and partly stitched. That's all done in the dark browns. And the, it, well, this is in the uh, Caron Water Lily, I think. And then this dark basket, this dark basket, kind of the darkness here, the dark of her hair. I just didn't want to lose those. And like I said, I wanted my beads to fit. This one doesn't seem to be as tight of a, a weave as the other one even though they're both a 32 count, because it just depends, but they're two different dyers. I can't remember who the dyer was of the other one. I still love that piece of fabric. It's gonna work nice for something, uh, but I switched to this one for this one. So that's as far as I got on Lakapati by Bella Filipina. Sorry for the crinkling. I do have these. <clears throat> I'm trying not to hold it close to the mic so that maybe it won't crinkle too badly for you guys. I'm going to get all, these, all three of these back in this bag. And then I have two more bags with all my beautiful ladies and my fancy folk in them. Stack that one there. There's another so much more to love bag. This one doesn't seem so full. What's in this one? This one's probably my spring or... Yeah, kind of springish pieces. Okay. Well, this one uh, was a brand new start at the first day of summer on uh, June 21st. I started her because um, she is the summer queen. I'm trying to, I, I thought I want to get all four seasons and my royal holiday. Those queens all started and kind of maybe mostly work on them in the season, probably. Um, this is a color, oh shoot. Hold on for a second. This is a 16 count Ada by Picture This Plus in the color Moon Glow. And this is where I am. So I just got part of her dress. That's it. <laughs> Not very far on this one. It's just a start. I stitched on her for a couple of days to get a start on her, but this is what the fabric's going to look like. And I think she's going to show up nice on this fabric. And this is kind of summery to me. So I wanted something that she would pop off of. And also this is kind of summer-ish to me. 
And in the past, all of my ladies I have stitched. I've st stitched the Firefly Fairies. I've stitched um, Lady of the Flag. I've stitched uh, the Lavender and Lace um, Angels, Seasonal Angels. In fact, you'll see one that I'm going to stitch on hopefully this fall. Whoops, that one goes in this bag. <clears throat> all on 16 count Ada. Uh, Let's see, these two, both of these are on scroll frames, so I'm going to have to get the scroll frames out for them. These are both lavender and lace. This one is Angel of Grace. And she is being stitched on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color Milk Chocolate, using all the call for DMCs. I don't even know if she has beads. She's one of the, like, a little bit older of uh, the angels from Lavender and Lace. She did a lot of these back in the 90s. And some of the very first ones didn't have as many beads, but still beautiful. So let me see if I can find her scroll frame. Oh, she, yeah, she's right here. So she's on 16 count milk chocolate Ada, two over, two, uh, two over one, and that's where I am on her. So I started down on her gown. This is the white part of her dress and kind of a, her overcoat of her dress and a ribbon that runs down along. So that is my Angel of Grace. I can show you, well, I already put her in the plastic, but if you can kind of tell why I am there on her. I love her. I love lavender and lace. Um, I stitched lavender light and lace before Marabilia. Um, and to me, lavender and lace is a little easier. It has more blocks of color to me. I find them easier than Marabilia for the most part. Some Marabilias aren't as many color changes and some are crazy color changes. <clears throat> and then of course all the beads and then Phrynix and all that stuff. This next one is a lavender and lace and she is Nantucket Rose. See, so she was um, 1992, it looks like. I'm trying to read backwards. Uh, I didn't start stitching her in 1992. I only started stitching her in 2022, so like 30 years later. Actually, the, and this one is one I restarted because I did not like the fabric I was using wasn't working. So I restarted her on this piece of, I don't even know what this is. Let's see, I wrote it down. 32 Count Lagana in the color Frost by Be Stitch Me. <clears throat> and I, I wanted something for the blue sky because this one is solid stitched. Except, and see, this is just part of it. I think this is her knee and then her dress draping down past her knee. Um, she is all solid stitched except for the sky in this piece. So I just wanted a pretty sky blue color. So I've stitched, I'll try not to drop the frame. I've stitched this bit right here. But this part is open and not stitched. Everything else is solid stitched. So, <clears throat> and see how the, the design, the picture looks gray for her dress. It's kind of greenishy gray. It's not quite as light gray, but I know it'll be beautiful. I've stitched several lavender and lace, and I always trust her, trust her process because Marilyn Levette Emblem was a great designer. She is the mother of Nora Corbett, who does Mirabilia and Nora Corbett, and unfortunately, she's passed away, so there won't be any more lavender and lace. She also uh, stitched, um, she did Lavender and Lace, Butternut Road, uh, oh, who else, what other company, um, lines did she have? There was one other one I know. Can't remember it right off the top of my head. But she did all of those. She designed all of those. What's this last? Oh, Okay. Um, I have one more So Much More to Love bag with the last of my fancy folk in it. This one is uh, Eliana by Marabilia. Let me see if I can 
quietly get her out of here. Not making too much racket. <clears throat> this one I am stitching on a 16 count piece of Ada in the color Peaceful Purple. It called for Peaceful Purple, but on the linen, but I'm doing it on Ada. And I am stitching her with, of course, the called for DMCs. I don't change the colors usually on my ladies. There's a thread hanging on me. And fold this in half. So like I said, 16 count peaceful purple. And this is where I am. That's how far I am on this one. So it's a, it's a purple color. If I hold it back here, that's true to color. Kind of looks like bluish up here up close, like a light gray blue, but it actually is a purpley color. So pretty. I loved all of the gorgeous, beautiful colors in her. So what I have stitched is this. I started in the tail end, so I'm stitching from this side over. So I've got some of this in. And that is my Princess Eliana. I have my queens and I have a princess. Another one in this bag. What else do I have in this bag? What other fancy person do I have on the go? Oh, yes, yes, yes. My Venetian Opulence by Mirabelia. She's being stitched on a piece of 32 count mushroom Lugana. She looks like this. Venetian Opulence by Mirabilia. 32 count mushroom Madonna with all of the called for threads. I have not worked any more on her since I last showed it though. I don't think I had on Princess Eliana either. Let's see, up or down, right here. This is where I am on her. So this was a middle start. So again, this is one where it's like, oh, okay, I didn't do the head. So she just looks like a jumbled mess. This is one that has a lot of color changes in her. Lots. You can see reds, purples, pinks, um, teals, dark browns, lighter blues, grays. You know, it's like already in, um, in her there. But this is part of the fan that she's holding in her hand. I have just a part of her hand in here. This is a sash that's at her waist that is... Um, I've done the crinic here. This is the uh, kind of like a like a buckle or a brooch that's holding her sash out of her waistline. So I've been working in here. She's pretty. I've seen her done up. I go to my Ocean City retreats. One of the ladies there finished her, had her all framed. She was just absolutely gorgeous. Her jewels that are hanging off of her the, the treasure be beads and things like that that this lady has, she is much more beautiful in person than what she looks like here. Much more. As with everything, you know, but I'm telling you, I, I would have never, she would have never been on my radar until I saw her done in person, finished and framed, and she is absolutely stunning. Take my word for it. Absolutely stunning. Okay, I have one more in this bag. And it is, wait a minute. Oh, I don't have, ew, I don't have her. Anyways, this is the last of my seasonal queens. Unfortunately, this one, she is spring queen. Spring queen, autumn queen are both out of print, but the rest you can still get on just a, any regular needle workshop, one, two, three stitch. Um, so this is the Spring Queen by Mirabilia. And I am stitching her on a piece of 32 count Lagana in the color Lavender. She was one I had to restart because I had her on something that I didn't like how, I wanted her dress to really um, look pretty and really show nicely because um, what I love about these ladies is their gorgeous gowns. So this is how far I am. Middle start. Um, and that's just part of her gown and kind of a ribbon sashing that's that pink. 
So I started in the middle is kind of in her lap right here. So I'm just, I just stitched in there on her. Uh, I haven't stitched in, <clears throat> I've stitched around the flower motifs that are in her dress so far. I haven't stitched those in yet. And there are beads that will go in all these empty spaces in this ribbon. That's where beads go. And I think there's a little bit of Krynik and beads going on in these leaves, I think, in some of them. <coughs> Sorry for that, excuse me. So that is where I am on that lady. Now I have another lady, thought she was in this bag, but she's not. She's a lavender and lace. She is one of my angels. I did not bring her, I didn't realize I did not have her pattern here. I think it must be in the bin over there. She is on a scroll frame. Oh my goodness, I can get this back in the bag. Ugh, just gonna leave it. Um, hold on for a second. Let me just throw all of these back in here. Let me do that with them. She is my autumn angel of autumn by lavender and lace. And I have her on a scroll frame, and I am going to pick her up and work on her this fall. See if I can get this one maybe finished. So let me scroll her a little bit since I'm showing her to you guys. This is just a handmade scroll frame. So I didn't make it, but um, somebody else did. Uh, copied what scroll frames look like. And so she's taped on here with masking tape. I used to tape the edges because I started her back in like 2000. And I used to tape the edges of my fabric anyway. So she's on a 16 count piece of Ada, but I'm not real sure what the color is because I didn't keep track of colors. I think I have a little bit to finish here on the top of her wing. And then there is, um, uh, no, her wing is finished. The top of her hair right here will have a lot of beads and crinic. So what's missing there is beads and crinic. Um, this is a water lilies, um, variegated thread. There's two different ones. I think there's one that's this color and one that's this color. So I need to finish filling in this bouquet, this autumn bouquet that she's holding. Finish stitching through the back stitching in her face. And let me scroll her the other direction. And then put all of her beads and crinic in. Her beads and metallic. So but otherwise she is done. So I'm almost done with her stitching. So once I get all of her stitching done, then I'm going to um, go in and put in her dress here, all of these empty spaces, these dots, that's um, a, a gold metallic. It goes all in there. And then um, I think there's beading all along the edge. And like I said, beading up in her bodice and up on her, her uh, headpiece. So that is my Autumn Angel. I started her a long time ago and I feel like it's time for her to be finished and, and be with her sisters. Cause I have finished um, the other three seasons and uh, I have um, spring, summer and winter all finished. So I need to finish her and get her done. That is, on my agenda for this fall. I'm, like I said, I've told you before, I'm traveling a lot this summer, so um, I can't foresee that I get any progress on her this summer, but I'm thinking in definitely by August, September, I'm gonna start pulling her up and trying to work on her. I keep her um, just, and I've showed this before, but it's been a while. Some of my scroll frames, I keep in these zipped up, this is a hyperallergenic pillowcase cover. So to keep your pillowcases um, protected and it just zips. So I have her in one of these, but I also have um, made some slip things. So that, that keeps her from being dusty because like I said, I started her um, probably in 2000, 2001, sometime at the turn of the century there or whatever you want to call it. Um, I finished her. Uh, or I started her back then. But one of the other things I've done is I've gone and I've just bought this quilted fabric at um, Joann's 
And I have taken and just, I've stitched the edge. I take, I took and I stitched the edge. I measured how big I wanted this. Basically it's a sack to be. And then the inside, it's already quilted. I didn't have to do a lining. It's just, it looks like that on one side and that on the other. So I just took, and you can see it's quilted. There's the batting in, in the middle of it. Sewed the edge. And then I just sewed up one seam and turned it right side out. So there's a seam here, but it's the only seam on the whole piece because this is folded at the bottom and it's folded. Oh no, there's two seams. The seams are on the side and I just folded it up at the bottom. So it's one long piece that I just stitched into a, and I picked the size that I wanted it to be. And this fits an 11 by 17 Q snap. And a lot of times I carry my projects to retreats and I have made two of these so far. I want to make a couple more. So that is that. Now, uh, let me show you some of these over here that I've been re working on recently. So they're still on Q-snaps, but I haven't worked on them since, I haven't worked on this one I know since I showed it to you. This one is Welcome to the North Pole by um, Primrose Cottage Stitches. A lot of people are stitching on this right now. Primrose Cottage Stitches has a stitch along for this going right now, where you stitch this part in June, July, August, September, October, and November, and you'd be done by Christmas, by December, so that you could have a finished piece. I'm stitching this one on a piece of 32 count vintage country mocha Lugana, and that's how far I am. I haven't gotten any farther since I showed it last time. So this is where my Welcome to the North Pole is so far. So that's this one. And I am stitching, let me look. Well, they called for um, some overdides and then they had uh, some DMC conversions if you wanted it. So I highlighted everything I was using. If I had the overdyed, I pulled it like I had Caterpillar, but I didn't have black coffee. So I'm using 844. I didn't have cherry cobbler, so I'm using DMC 817, and so on. So I just highlighted the ones that I am using. And then I, oh, I switched in Buckeye Scarlet for Turkish Red. It's the only one that I completely switched. <clears throat> so that's what I'm using for, on this one. Um, the next one that I still have on a little 11 by 11 Q-snap is... Oh, yeah, this is my Courage piece. This is my... Um, one that I started with uh, everybody who's doing uh, Pam's Survival Sal for 30 years uh, since being diagnosed with breast cancer. She's a survivor. I told everybody I was stitching mine in the color lavender, which represents all cancers, since I have <clears throat> so many people in my family and friends group that have been affected by cancer. So, um, and including my dad who passed away from brain cancer. And I have a sister-in-law who passed away from ovarian cancer a long time ago, like 30 years ago. So um, I wanted to represent all cancers. And so I picked out a, lot, a bunch of lavender threads that I have. Some of them are my cottage garden threads for my cottage garden threads of the month and think, uh, colors like that. And I am stitching this on a piece of 32 count Lugana in the color uh, Whisper which is a light gray color. So that's only how far I am. I have not done any more since I showed. I just have a start. I started it on June 11th when the stitch along started. And I don't do stitch alongs, I do start alongs. <laughs> I um, will plug away at this. It may take me five years, but, and then I'm gonna tr decide what I'm doing with all of the alphabet. So I'm gonna stitch all the motifs first because <clears throat> I started a list of people I wanted to put on here and their initials to represent on my piece, but um, I'm kind of running out of space, unfortunately. Um, this next one is um, another stitch along. Uh, it's Flea Market Flowers. And there's a stitch along uh, with uh, Lindsay from Blushing Pink Stitches and uh, Lori Chicolone from Once Upon a Stitch called Back to the Flea Market Sal. So if you want to follow along with what's going on there, uh, you can follow that on Instagram. This is uh, by Lori Holt. Sorry for that clink. 
And I'm stitching this on a piece of, uh, it's an even weave, it's a Lugana. Looks like it's a fiber on a whim. I'm not real sure what the color is, but this is how far I am. I'm not very far. I picked this up. I have these three things sitting in my travel bag. It's, um, last time I was stitching on it, I took the dogs to the groomers. If you can hear one clicky clacking their way out of here. <laughs> the other one's sleeping on her bed. Um, I took, when I take them to the groomers, I have to sit and wait for a couple of hours. I go, I went to a, a co coffee shop that's down the street from where the groomers is because she's out of town. She's where I used to live. So I still take the dogs there because she's really good with them. So I have to drive, you know, 20 miles to go take my dogs. Instead of driving 20 miles there, 20 miles back home, turn around an hour later to go back and drive 20 miles each way. I just stay. I just, you know, sit in a coffee shop or if the weather's nice, sit in my car and I stitch for a couple hours while she's doing their beautification process. So I was stitching on this and I think I got this flower done and started on that one. <laughs> wow, I was waiting for the dogs. So I put them all in this one little bag. This was something that was sent to me to uh, review a while back and it's actually a diaper bag. But there's um, sections you can take in and out of this. And I took the sections out. They're just Velcroed in. But it has pockets. Like I have some hand cream. I have my Oort, my travel Oort thing. But it's called a Molly Ollie. You can find this or one similar to it on Amazon. I have my eyeglasses. I have a pen. I have some hand sanitizer. I have um, a bunch of like, I have needles and all kinds of mess in here. Needle minders. Um, but I can fit. I have three projects in here. I have my little travel case in here that I made from a jewelry box. You know, I just, and a magnetic board because that's what I use to keep track of my pattern when I'm stitching. I just have all kinds of stuff in this bag. So they're in there because I can grab this bag and go. I, you know, can, um, <clears throat> if I know I got to sit at a doctor's office or something like that, I can just grab that bag and take it with me. No problem. Get oil changed on my car, grab the bag and sit and wait. So this one is a bag that I made using Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch. If you look back at the whip parade I just did a couple of days ago, I linked it. So hopefully the link worked because I had people asking me what um, tutorial I used. So I linked Elizabeth's tutorial um, for these bags. So if you're interested, um, it's a, she's a really good at explaining it and if I can do it, because I'm not that great of a seamstress, I'm not that proficient. I can work my sewing machine, but I'm not a one that's an avid sewer. So this one is my Santa's Village. So now we're getting into some of my winter and Christmas stuff. Um, this is by Little House Needleworks Country Cottage. It's a whole series. I'm not really gonna. So I have the whole series. This is one. I've done this one. And then like this is number 12. They're not in order in here. 11. But I have all of all of them and I looked and uh, looked to see what special threads because a lot of them are DMCs but some of them have a different specialty over dyed like this old brick. So if there was a special thread in them I threw those in the bag with each piece so that when I get to that block, I have them. So I just have all of these different ones. There's block number nine, eight, seven. Looks like I'm going backwards here. <laughs> Somehow they got put away backwards in my bag. And now they'll be forwards again because I'm going back through the stack. So, you know, I just have um, those in there. I am stitching this on a piece of Vintage Country Mocha, it looks like, probably 32 count. And I have also the beat, the buttons that come. So they're just in here. I ordered all of the buttons because every one of these um, pieces has a button on it somewhere. Like I think this one is, looks like it might be a little button up here at the top, a little heart or something. So each of them have a button. So I ordered all the buttons and all the fancy cotton threads. And I've done the first one. 
So that's Santa's house. And so they'll go across in rows, I think three rows maybe, four wide, three long. So I just had the first one. And this border goes in between every one of the rows. Kind of like a candy cane looking border, red and white. So that's how far, let me, I wanna make sure I show them long enough. Here his eyes will be, I'll put little beads for his eyes. And I think the button for this one is a star on the top of the tree. So I still have that to do. And there are some snowflakes, I believe, that I have not stitched in. <clears throat> Otherwise, that block is finished. I'm ready to move on to block number two. So. And usually Christmas stuff, I have been trying to do a little bit of Christmas in July. But usually Christmas, I stitch more in this season, but I am trying to pull them up some out of season because it will take me forever to finish any of these if I only work on them, you know, for a couple, three months of the year. So um, this next one, I just recently showed it to you because I was uh, recently working on it. <clears throat> this is Christmas at Hawk Run Hollow by Carriage House Samplings. Again, I gridded all of my blocks and I was working at finishing that one. I had this one already done, so haven't worked anymore. This is on a 16 count piece of Ada in the color lamb's wool. Is it lamb's wool? Pretty sure. <clears throat> it's light, very light tan color. <clears throat> I am sorry for my throat. I was outside, I have allergies. <clears throat> and <laughs> I am all the way back in the sofa here so I can show you that very end. <clears throat> but I'll come close and show the actual stitching on the blocks for you guys. So that's where I am on my Christmas at Hawk Run. This right here, it called for teal frost. This, this color here, it's kind of like, I guess the snow on the ground. Um, Till Frost by, I'm not sure, because everything else I'm doing in the DMC. But um, it called for, no, Mint Frost by Thread Gatherer. <clears throat> and I did not have that. So I subbed in, um, I don't know if it's, if I can find it easy in the bag. I subbed in my Aqua Sky from, um, Victorian motto, but this was a little bit too teal. So then I decided since I stitch with two threads, I'm gonna do one thread of each of these. So I have Aqua Sky and Frost mixed together. And that's what I'm using for all of the parts that call for that um, mint frost. Because I figure that's a minty color and a frost color. So, um, and together, it comes out to be this. So this one, I said right now I'm working on map of Hawk Run. I kind of try to, I rotate in a Hawk Run fairly frequently. So I'm usually touching, you know, working on a Hawk Run at some point in every month, pretty much. Oh, this one is another one that's just a start. This one is a bag by Dot Dot Goose. It's one of my Christmas bags. This is by Bygone Stitches. This is Christmas Quaker 2. So this is a final fronted bag, which means I have a harder time getting my plastic bag out of there because I put it in plastic because if you have your paper pattern up against uh, the vinyl, then you end up with, um, it sometimes could stick to it and then it rips your paper off because it gets stuck on there. There's the inside of the bag. It's just a bunch of ornaments in there. Um, Christmas Quaker 2 by Bygone Stitches. And I did an upper left-hand start up here. I am stitching this one with, oh, a variety of 
uh, Christmas reds and greens that I pulled out of my Victorian motto stash. So you can buy packs off of Etsy, off their Etsy site of um, like Christmas pack, or you can buy uh, one maybe that has a lot of reds or greens in it. So I'm just doing a variety of these um, reds and greens. And the two that I'm working with right now this um, project bag came with um, a little flannel pocket thing. So I'm keeping, so that I don't get confused what green I'm working with right at the moment and which red I'm working with at the moment, I'm keeping them in this because I'm switching around. When I switch motifs, I'll switch to a different red. Um, when I switch to a different, um, occasionally with the different green, which is usually used for the, um, titles of the songs, the Christmas carols, I will um, switch it to, uh, uh, might switch the green around. This one is on, it looks like a 32 count piece of Lugana in the color Plush by Fortnite Fabrics. This is the right side. And I only have a start. Last uh, winter, I pulled it up and I got that far. And I have not stitched on it since. This is what the uh, material looks like. And then my stitching up closer. So I started, Oh Come All Ye Faithful. I only got the first two words. And I got a little stocking in. I got one motif completely finished and one started. That's it. So I know right now for this, this song title and this motif that I am using these two flosses. You could do the same with like having just a plastic Ziploc bag in your project bag that you hold them in separate so that you know which ones you're working with. If you're doing something like I'm doing, because I do crazy things like just mishmash stuff together instead of using all this exact same because they're all very similar looking. The, the flosses, very similar. I picked ones that were similar, but not the same. So, so, and it's harder to tell on the camera. Some of these are a little tiny bit brighter. Some are a little bit more uh, burgundy maybe looking, you know, a little darker. So they're a little different, but they all kind of go together. And same with my two greens. And they're so close that I thought I might get confused as to which one I'm working with. So I needed to keep the two that I'm working with at the moment separate from uh, the ones that I'm not stitching with at the moment. Just to put all of these back in the bag. And it told you how many yards of each, how many yards of the red you needed and how many yards of the green you needed. And that's why I picked all of those flosses because I knew that would be enough yardage of uh, thread. This is a bag I made using the same tutorial. Uh, this one has, oh, this is my Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. Looks like this. I switched my colors um, for Heirloom Gold. I'm using Homestead by Victorian Motto. For Endive, I'm using Bronzed Green and 730 DMC and 936 DMC by uh for Calico Kitty, I was using Cherry Cobbler with Classic Color Works. And for Fool's uh, Gold, I'm using Autumn Weave by Victorian Motto. So, um, although the gold, the only thing I'm not liking is my gold is not showing up that well. I am stitching this on a 16 count piece of Ada, but in the color Heritage by Picture This Plus. And the last time I had showed this to you guys, I was telling you how I was um, using, you know, some DMCs in with the one green color because I was afraid I wasn't going to have enough. Um, this is where I am. And on the camera, I guess I am seeing these gold colors a little bit. But sometimes I feel like if it were way back on the wall, I don't know how well you'd be able to see it. I don't know. But I don't really want to pick them all out. So I think I'm just going to keep going with it and it's just going to be ghosted on this piece. 
So that's where I am on uh, my Christmas Garden by Blackbird Designs. Probably started this a couple of years ago, so I need to get more work done on this. It says I started this in uh, February of 2021. So yeah, back in February was two years that I had started this. All right, next one is a Teresa Kogut pattern because it's in one of my Teresa Kogut uh, fabric bags by So Much to Love. I know that this is a Teresa Kogut. Oh, I love Teresa Kogut. She is a phenomenal designer. And this one is Heaven and Nature. Looks like this. And I did an upper left-hand start like I usually do on uh, things that have a corner like that. This one is, looks like a, yep, Fortnite Fabrics Caravan Tan 32 Count Lagana. And I'm using, of course, I'm stitching two over two. And I'm using all of the called for, except I'm putting in Weeks Dye Works Porpoise in place of Joshua Tree. Because Porpoise looks more gray than Joshua Tree. And it is used for things like this little raccoon here. And I did not want my raccoon to look greenish brown. I want him to look gray. So I switched in Porpoise. I don't know if I've got the raccoon in yet. Nope, not yet. But this is where I am on uh, Heaven and Nature by Teresa Kogut. Oh, I love it. I haven't worked on this one in a while. Let me get this one out and work on it some soon. This should be one of my Christmas in July pieces. Hmm, maybe this one might have to make it with me to... Uh, my my retreat. Hmm. Maybe I will set this one aside. And uh, take this one along. I do you like how I'm brainstorming while I'm talking to you guys? <laughs> I can't throw it on the dog bed like I did in the last video. The ones that I want to take. Because I have a dog on the dog bed. And I don't want to throw these on top of her. So... I don't think she'd like that too much. I don't think she would enjoy that. So I'm gonna set it over here. Oh, and while I'm doing that, I'm gonna be drinking my cold coffee. The next one is by Prairie Schooler. I'll take it out of its plastic. This one's in just a plastic bag. I have, and this is just a start on this one. Uh, this one is called Christmas Eve. Yeah, Christmas Eve. By Perry Schooler. This one is book 158. And this is one of their reprints. Uh, and I'm doing the called for. And I'm stitching this on. Is this golden needle? What is this one? 16 count country French golden needle. Ada. It's only going to need half of this piece of fabric. It's not very big. I got the border in and I started on the sleigh, the very back corner of the sleigh. Tell you what, Heidi was stitching Faye. She's stitching this one and she's done a color conversion for hers. She's stitching it on a very dark piece of fabric, but she's converting the reds into like uh, teal, blue teal colors. Looks really cool. But I'm sticking with the, um, the traditional, the red and the green and the brown. So, and I wanted a piece of fabric that was dark enough that you could see the snowflakes in the sky, but not too dark that you couldn't see the browns. So that's why I picked this one. It's not very big. This one's one that shouldn't take me a whole long time, although there's a lot of stitching on this one. So um, it'll take deceptively long. It'll be longer to stitch than you'd think but it's not as huge as some of the pieces that I'm working on. It's actually on the smaller side. <clears throat> so, just 
stack that over there. The next one is one I just started recently. I started this for, uh, it was one of my mania starts. And this is by Tiny Modernist. And this is called the Jolly Christmas Bell Pool. And it looks like that. So I started up here at the top. I've taken this to one of my stitching meetings that I went to with the ladies that I do go to Ocean City with. Um, they were meeting at a lady's house up in Northern Virginia, which was fairly close to me, at least closer than Maryland, because I usually meet in Maryland a lot. So I went and I was stitching on this. I brought this with me. And this is a piece of 28 count mushroom Lugana. And I was just working away at, I figured that's easy stitching. Although I did mess up a couple of times in the beginning. I was like, Vicki, there's supposed to be three, not two or whatever, or three, not four. So uh, eventually I got the rhythm of it and I just went around. And then this is the little pom-pom on the end of his little Santa hat in the beginning of a snowflake. I think I was just finishing off the white when I put this pom-pom in. I still had white on my needle, so, or whatever color that is. I am using the called for DMCs for this one. Pretty sure. Yeah, this is called for DMCs or anchors. I'm using the DMCs. So I've just got his little pom-pom, little beginning of that snowflake, and some of this border around there. That's it. Got a ways to go on this one. It's skinny, but long. So, but I got it started so I can work on it. Sometimes the battle is getting something started, you know, measuring off, finding your piece of material, measuring where your border is, where your stitching starts, finding all your threads. So once you do all of that, all you gotta do is pick it up and stitch on it. To get it started. So sometimes I like to have starts so that I can have some stuff to work on. This one is Christmas Village by Sarah. Sarah Garamani. She's an Italian designer. Really hard to see this because it's a small picture, but I'll hold it up as close as I can. So this is Christmas Village by Sarah. This one I had started on a piece of fabric, didn't like it. This was probably a couple of years ago, so I restarted it. <clears throat> then I just picked a piece of 16 count, this looks like milk chocolate. 16 count. This is not hand dyed by me. I must have not updated. I think the one I started it on <clears throat> was a 16 count hand dyed by me uh, fabric, and I didn't like it because the hand dyed in it that I did was not very good. So this is a piece of vintage country mocha. This is 16 count eight in the color vintage country mocha. That's what this is. I still have a dangly thread. So I did not get very far on my restart back last winter. So this is where I am. But I like the whites are showing up really well on this vintage country mocha, but also the reds and the greens. And so those are a lot of the colors that will be in this piece. I am using the DMCs called for. Did not change the colors. DMCs, I have a complete set of DMC. So when it's DMC, I can use the DMC unless I feel like putting in some overdyes or something different. So. Sorry for the zip. This next one is by Madame Liffy. She is French, I believe. And I just gotta get this out of here. You can order these charts off of one, two, three stitch. Um, <clears throat> this one is called, <clears throat> sorry, Noel. It looks like this. This is just a digital rendering. It's actually way cuter than the picture. I started this, this was way back when I very first got back into cross stitch, so like three years ago. So this was one of the first pieces I picked up and started. And then I squirreled all over the place and haven't gotten a lot done on this one. I am using the call for, <clears throat> oh my goodness. I don't know if you guys, if you watch me faithfully, I was talking about how, oh my goodness, how I lost a pattern. And I said, I have since, put new flooring down here in the basement 
new flooring in my craft room. I had to take every stick of thing out of here, every stick of furniture, every box, every bag, every book, every nook and cranny had to be cleaned out, every drawer. And I still couldn't find the pattern. And I said, I will find it one day stuck in a project bag. Sorry for the sidebar, but I found it. Oh my goodness. Well, this is the chart. It is by Cottage Garden. Yep, here we go. Peace on Earth. Now, I don't, this, I started up here and I tucked it away. I have, I found, I had the project, the piece of material I was stitching on, but I could not find the pattern and the threads. So they ended up in this Noel bag somehow. Oh my goodness, Vicki. So these are probably all my threads for it. Let me get all of that. Oh my gosh, I found it. I knew one day I was like, it has to be in a project bag. And one day I'm gonna be going through my project bags and I'm gonna find it. Yep, and here's my cheat sheet with all the colors. There we go. Yay. <clears throat> these might be some more because I know I'm not using overdyes for this Madame Lafie. I'm using all the, uh, uh, the <clears throat> DMCs for this one. And I'm stitching this one on a piece of 16 count Ada. It looks like lamb's wool maybe because this was way back when I got back into stitching and I wasn't keeping track of what I was stitching on. But this is where I am on this one. Sorry for that sidebar. I'm so excited. I've been looking for that for like a year. Now I can stitch on that one some more. I kept the project because I was like, I have not taken that pattern anywhere. So it has to be in this room somewhere. And sure enough, it showed up in a project bag. It showed up in the one with this. It showed up in a bag it did not belong in. I don't know how I did that. Maybe in a time I was showing my projects and I stuffed it in the wrong bag. So that's why I am on this one. Not very far. Like I said, I started this a while back. I still have, but what I was thinking is when I get this green is all filled in. So that's a nice fill in spot too. But this ornament right here, the color changes in it. Whew, I tell you, they're crazy, crazy, crazy. So um, I need to get, I want to get some more work on this one. This one's just in a plastic mesh bag. That was housing two projects. Oh my goodness. Well, let me put that to the side because I'm going to check all the threads and make sure I'm pulling the right threads out of there for the right projects. Because <clears throat> there was a whole stash of threads in there with it and some of them probably belonged to one and some to the other. This next one is just in one of these plastic mesh bags. This one I am... Is by Leela Studios. This one is called uh, Holiday Quaker. I'm stitching this on a, I got the sticker on, <laughs> on the bag. Uh, 16 count crystal whirlpool Ada. It looks like this. Oh, hopefully that glare's not too bad. And the crystal means it's uh, opalescent. I did not get very far on this one. Mm -hmm. So I'm right here, but I don't know if you can see the sparkle in that fabric, but I got that far on my Holiday Quaker by Leela Studio. That's why I'm on that one. So this is why everything has to get put back in their project bags because I lose things. have all my project bags neatly stored away, but if I put the wrong things in the wrong bags, then I get messed up. This next one is so cute and so adorable, but I still have not gotten very far on it, And I, but I love it. It is gonna be completely adorable when it's done. This is another one that is just a digital rendering, but it is so cute. It's by Sugar Stitches. I got this off a of one, two, three stitch. It's called a, It's a Marshmallow World. I am doing this on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color milk chocolate, it looks like. So the colors, look at these colors. These are the DMCs. Look at these colors. People. <gasps> this is so cute. Hmm. Maybe this would be another Christmas in July stitch I need to work on a little bit. 
So I have a dangly thread, actually a couple of dangly threads, but that's how far I am. 16 count milk chocolate. <gasps> Ada. Isn't that precious and adorable? Look at the colors, I love it. It's just very whimsical, very cute. It's my only sugar stitches I have. Her, her chart, her pattern is very easy to read. It's, it's a color chart, you know, so it's in color. Um, very easy to follow. I just don't get, I haven't gotten much stitching on this one. But I will, I will finish this one day. It is cute. It is stinking adorable. Okay, this one's just in a plastic bag too. I don't, for my Christmas ones, I, I have a bunch of Christmas material. I need to make some Christmas bags. Okay, this one's a fairly new one, a new start. This one is by um, Brenda Gervais. It's uh, one of her newer releases. It's called Santa Stops Here. Looks like that. A lot of people are stitching on this one. This was a an exclusive retreat a year ago, and then she came out with it just not too long ago, back in the fall, I think. She re uh, released it to everybody. It looks like I'm using all of the called for, but I've got myself a note here saying that I'm switching out um, two colors. I'm switching the roof color to grapevine from Weeks Dye Works and the snow to bamboo because I wanted the snow to show up more than just with the uh, kind of beigey color. And I am stitching this on a piece of Rainy Day by Be Stitch Me 28 Count Lugana. I wanted a blue for mine instead of a, a beige. So that's how far I am on Santa Stop here. So I've been working on that candy house. And uh, some of the border. Love it. I like a good house. If you haven't figured that out about me yet, these I love projects with a, a good house. That's another one that's not super huge, but it does have a lot of stitching in it with that house. Uh, another project bag made by me using that tutorial by Elizabeth Ann. Uh, oh, this is Kringles by Little House Needleworks. Looks like this. Started this one back when I first got back into stitching, back in like 2020, the end of 2020. And I am stitching this one on a piece of Ada, I know that. Um, what color is this one? I, like I said in the beginning, I wasn't keeping track of the color. Uh, amber. Looks like it's a piece of 16 count Ada in the color Amber. And this is how far I am. It's got all kinds of straggly threads hanging off of it. But there I am. That's it. <laughs> but it's looking so good. I like doing that brickwork. That's fun, that's fun to me. And I have come over and I've only put the one color in. It's a two-tone roof shingles on there, like dimensional shingles. So I still have the other color, the darker color to put in over here. That's why the roof looks like two different colors, but it's actually not. It's just, I haven't blended in the other color yet. So that's where I am on Kringles. Mm -hmm. That's a beautiful Christmas stitching to stitch on this winter. Um, oh yes, and this other one is one I started way back, like in the end of 2020, um, when I very first got back into stitching. This one is a Lake House Stitch Company bag. This one is a Carolyn Manning design. Ordered it off of her site. So it was a digital download. I'm stitching this on 16 count Misty Blue Antique Ada. 
and it is called the Winter Wonderland Garden Ram Labyrinth. It looks like this. So this is a digital rendering. It's not the true, it's kind of a mandala style. That was very pretty. And I only have been working on the one corner. It's like I said, squirrel. But isn't it pretty? It's gonna be gorgeous when it's finished. Sorry for the wrinkles. It's been sitting in its project bag for a little while because I have not, I think I, I don't know if I've worked on this at all this year. I might have pulled it up last winter. I'm not sure and worked a little bit on it. But that was so long ago. I can't remember for sure or not. And I think I got one or two more Christmas winter. This is a winter one. So this is a piece when it's finished. It wouldn't have, it's not necessarily Christmas, but it's winter. So this is something I could leave up through February in my house, you know, January and February. And same with this one. This is in a dot dot goose bag. And it is my uh, Winter Rose Manor by Brenda Gervais. So it looks like this. And I was recently working on this. I may have not shown you this since I've worked on it. So this might be another piece that uh, I've been working on in the last 12 days. Because I know it was real recent. I'm not sure if I showed you my recent progress. I'm stitching this on a 16 count piece of Ada. I want to say it's like amber or dirty Ada. I didn't write the color down. This is when I started a, a little while back. And my piece of fabric got caught on something. I got ripped in the corner, but it's still going to work. See my chunk? But I looked and the margins are still going to work. This is where I am on Winter Rose Manor. So when I last picked this up, I was doing, I filled in the rest of the windows and I did the roof. I might have showed it to you guys actually in my last, uh, in my June wrap up video. So that's where this one is. And I switched out the house color. Well, I did switch out a few of the colors. But the house, I decided I wanted my house a little pinker. And I picked um, Classic Color Works Rosy Glow for my pink. So, so my house is a little pinker than the call for conch. This is another one that I can come in and I can just come fill in the, the snow down here or hmm. this is one that I'm getting good progress on. So once you get that big mama jama house finished, which I just did recently, that's that's the good bulk of the uh, the stitching on this one. I still have another Christmas one in there, or winter. This one is a Mania Start. Just started this, it's just in a plastic zip bag, like a plastic bag. I don't have any kind of project bag for this one right now. But this one is by Shannon Christine, it's called Cup of Cheer. I started this in Mania, it's one of my Mania Starts. So I have a start on this one. I am stitching this one on. I'm using the called for DMC colors and I am stitching this one on a piece of fiber on a whim, uh, 28 count Lugana and the color corn flower. And this is how far I am on this one. So I got the word have and the start of the penguin mug. That's even that one. That's just a start. But all of these mugs are so, you could just stitch one. They're all, none of them overlap each other. So you could say, oh, I really like this cup. I'm just gonna stitch that. Or I really like this one over here. I'm just gonna stitch that. So 
you could pick any of those mugs and stitch it as a small. And Shannon Christine, her colors are so pretty that she picks. Very pretty, very vibrant. And like I said, they're just DMC. They're not any kind of fancy threads. What you would call overdyed, fancy silks. And it's all cross stitch. There's no fancy um, stitching. Okay, this next one is by Barbara Anna Designs. And this was one of my New Year's Eve starts. And it's called Let It Snow. It looks like these. And I am stitching this one on, looks like I stuck the sticker here. Um, 32 count Lugana in the color blue. Aqua. Aqua blue. It's a dark blue. And is that right? Yep. I'm sorry. I have a dangly thread. That's how far I am. So I got the scissors and I was working on some of the houses on top of the scissor handle. So it will fit on just the top part of this um, piece of material and I have, you know, a good chunk left for something else. <clears throat> I, I wish I brought my glasses over here so I can really read this, but I didn't. I forgot. Sometimes my husband will be wanting to show me something that's small, like he wants me to read something. He'll go, oh, look at this, look at this. And I'll say, honey, I don't have my reading glasses on. I can't see that. And he goes, why don't you have your reading glasses? And I'm like, well, I don't walk around with them in my hand. He said, you need to have one of those little necklaces. I said, nah, I'm not going to do that either. <laughs> I mean, maybe one day if it gets to the point where I'm so aggravated, the fact I got to go. I have glasses stashed all over the house. I have a pair in the kitchen, a pair in the bedroom, a pair. I have probably two or three pairs sitting in here, one in the TV room. For when I'm stitching out there, I have glasses everywhere. Oh, this is a country, gar uh, this is a cottage garden uh, piece that's one of the songbird seasons one and it's called Winter Wisdom. Oh, this one's so cute. I need to work some more on this one. I haven't picked this one up all year and it is adorable. I'm doing this on a piece of Be Stitch Me fabric in the color um, Garden Party. It's a 32 count Lugana and I'm stitching with um, I think all the call for, I'll have to look. Let's see, Garden Party is kind of peachy green, but I got a branch and one of the birds. I got part of the branch and a bird. Isn't he cute? So I need to work some more on this one. Hmm. I think I'm doing all the call for. No, wait a minute, I got a copy here. No, I'm not. I'm switching in a whole bunch of things from stash so um, that is my winter wisdom by cottage garden samplings all right now winter snowfall oh this one doesn't have much work at all this is a start this is another Shannon Christine and this one she gives you several different color options. Like you do the white, but then the color, you could do a, um, what she calls a petrol, uh, a blue conversion. Uh, she gives you different ones. I think it's on one of the sheets. Like there's a green conversion, a blue conversion, a pink conversion. And I think I'm, I picked out some kind of teal conversion, or maybe I didn't decide yet. I'm not. I'm doing the white with B5200 from DMC. So I'm, I wanted a really white, white. And the fabric I'm doing it on is a light grayish color. I don't know if I have it. And like I said, this is just a start. This is just a start. 
Oh, this is uh, Vintage Stormy Night. This is one of the ones that's printed. And I just have that. I have that much of the white corner done. And I have not decided which color I want to use for the color part of this design. But I haven't um, stitched any more on this one. Probably part because I don't know what color I want to stitch it with. And it's a lot of white stitching. Because it's got all of this. But it is going to be so gorgeous stitched up. All that white is going to be stunning. This is just in a mesh zip bag from Amazon. Oh, my stack is getting tall. Okay, the next one is still another winter one. This is my um, Country Cottage Needleworks. Oh, yes, there they go. They all slid down. <laughs> Avalanche. This one's another series one. This is... Um, <clears throat> uh, what is it called? The Snow Village series. So I started and I did the ice cream or the snowball stand or something like that. Snowflake stand, something. So there are several, just like the Santa Claus one, the Santa Village. Um, so I have several. That's the middle block of the Snow Village. I'm sure you've seen these before. Quite a few of these, like you've got popsicle carts and Snowballs, snowflakes, the hot cocoa shop, um, peppermint shop, all these cute ones. There's the snowball stand. Um, this one, I can't remember what this one's called. And that one. So there's a... Um, I am stitching this on a piece of uh, Jody fabric from the Still City Stitcher, so it's a no name. It's a blue fabric. I picked a blue. And I got the snowflake stand. Except for the snowman, I don't, I didn't finish his hat. And I started working across. So um, I've got the branches starting working for this, the next, next one that'll be next to it which will be one of the houses. I did a layout. I wrote it all down, laid it all out. All my scribble. Mm -hmm. So I've got the popsicles, uh, the snowflakes for sale. And so the peppermint parlor will go next to it, or I can go down underneath and put the skates and the sleds in, whichever. But that's where I am on uh, Snow Village. This one, because I restarted this, I had it on a uh, a piece of Ada, the, the way it was dyed, it was almost like it had, um, I don't even remember where I got the Ada from, but it was um, like, kind of like rubbery. Um, it kind of clogged, the holes were a little clogged with whatever was on it. And so it was hard, harder for me to work with. I was pulling my needle back and forth, you know, and it was like, eh. I don't think I'm going to ever finish this one if I have to fuss with that material. So I quit and I picked that one. Now you saw recently I finished my Prairie Schooler Village. So I've been working on that one. So I put this one aside and I haven't worked on this one in a while. But this is book number 79. It's Prairie Schooler Christmas Village. This is one that has a whole bunch of these trees back here. And I am stitching this one on it's like some kind of gray Ada. 16 count light blue, but then I have a question mark and I'm using all the call for DMC. And I am that far. So I got, I think that's a sawmill and the horse carrying trees, part of it. There's a little back stitching and stuff that still needs to be put there. And I've got, got a few of those trees stitched in that are in the background back there. That's where I am on the um, Christmas Village. So now that I've finished the Prairie Schooler Village, then I can concentrate on this one in place of that one. Because this one's kind of wrinkled up. Um, 
because I thought, well, let me get one of them done. Concentrate on one, then I'll pick up the other one. Uh, the next one is still a winter piece. I think it's my last winter piece. Oh my goodness, I'm struggling. Let me just stick that in there like that. This one is another Cottage Garden Samplings one. And it is called Peace on Earth. Looks like this. So it's another, no, it's not one of the songbirds. And I am stitching this one on a piece of 16 count Ada. I don't know, this might be a mystery color. I think it's a, a piece I picked up out of my stash and I didn't know what the color was. So I'm not seeing a, anything written down for this one. But this is how far I am. I got that far. It looks like glacier. It might be a piece of glacier if I picture this plus. What it kind of looks like to me. Same one I'm using for um, the Blue Flower Huckleberry Farm. This might be a piece I cut off of that piece of fabric. Because I didn't need a really big piece for this one. Oh, I lied. This one's kind of a wintry piece, although it doesn't look super, super winter. This one is um, And Heaven and Nature Sing by Kathy Barrick. This is the one with a huge deer. Looks like this. So I gotta start on that deer. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be fun. He's lots of feeling. He's gonna be, he's one of those that's like, he's just gonna be enjoyable. I'm stitching this one on a 32 count piece of Lugana in the color clay. <clears throat> I think this is one I picked up off of the, uh, they'll have remnant pieces and things like that at Salty Yarns. And I think this was one of the ones I picked up from there. Whoops, I got them sideways. And I have a deer rear. That's as far as I got on this one. <laughs> the deer rear. So, this fabric is nice and soft. So I'm gonna, when I wanna do some fill in, just get him outlined and fill in on this little guy. one more winter one in here and then I think the rest are not winter necessarily um, this one is called uh, gathering of the greens by Stacy Nash looks like this and I am stitching this one with a bunch of conversions because I started this one back um, during COVID when you couldn't get anything and I was just stitching from stash like I usually do anyway. I think that's what made me start stitching from stash was COVID. I was um, getting back into cross stitch and you couldn't get a hold of, of the called for fabrics. It was hard to find the threads. So I just started stitching whatever. You know, I picked colors that looked close to the color or a color I liked that matched my fabric and, and just started stitching. Um, this is on 16 count Ada in the color Heritage. And it says I changed out most of the colors on my notes there. And this is where I am. So I got the house done and some of the left hand corner up there. This one's not super big. Piece of fabric's only that. So it doesn't go down a whole lot farther and goes across, of course, some. So, and I don't think I've touched this one this year. If I do a whip parade at the end of the year, I think my thinking is I'm only gonna start doing, because I keep track of what I'm working on anyway, I'm gonna um, try to, why does it seem like I'm, I think he's, I hope I don't knock you down. <laughs> um, I keep track of what, I, what I'm stitching on. So I think I'm only gonna, if I do a end of the year whip parade, I think I'm only gonna show what I've worked on from now to the end of the year. Cause I'm not gonna re keep re-showing things if they don't have any progress on them. 
And this one is All American by Primrose Cottage Stitches. Looks like that. This I'm stitching on a piece of 28 count Laurel Green Lugana. Although it does not look green, it looks more like straw, like a tannish color. And that's how far I am on this one. So this is where I've gotten to. I'm using most, pretty much the, all the called for. There's a couple of overdyes in the rest of DMCs on this one. Or I know at least the one red color is overdyed. The rest might be all DMC. Whatever the called fors are. So that's on a piece of laurel green. And <clears throat> I got, that was a start this year, this summer, and I got that far on that one. So I'm pretty pleased with the progress on that one. That one's stitching up pretty fast. This is in a bag I made. Um, this one I started last summer. I went to Brick City Stitchers in Ocala, and this is a pattern I picked up, and I started it while I was in Florida. And it is called Bump in the Night by Prairie Schooler, book number 201. And I started up here. I got this witch done. I don't know if I got too much more than the witch. I am stitching this on. It was a piece of fabric I bought there. Um... 16 count Ada and the color cream and sugar. Oh, and I got a bunch of, because I was traveling with this one, because I don't think I've worked on it since I got back from Florida last September. But here um, is where I am on Bump in the Night. And I had just some of my black DMC just tucked in there because I was like, well, I think I was stitching in the hotel room on the way home or or still at my mom. We were sitting at her kitchen table stitching. I was stitching. I was trying, I was teaching her how to stitch at the same time that I was doing this one. And the next one is in a bag I made. This one has my Prairie Schooler Santas in it. I'm stitching them all on Vintage Country mocha 18 count and i have one finish so far out of all of them and i'm started on this one this one is the what is he 2018 santa and he's on just a little nerd hoop that i purchased off of amazon because i thought it figured perfect size for me to be able to work on him you know, and it, it could be like a travel piece. I could just grab this bag. It's already got the little hoop and the threads. And it's small. Because the only one I have finished was the 2000, the 2021 Santa. Is this one. And it's, I'm not stitching the border and it said winter woods. I'm not stitching the words. But I got him done. So I've got a bunch of this vintage country mocha in here to, um, cause I want to stitch them all on that fabric. Oh, that one's not a start. Oh, that's in there. Well, I did stitch this and it was my, uh, smalls exchange at StitchCon last year. And I had another piece of the fabric that I stitched it on. So I just kept the, kept it to stitch it again, maybe for myself, maybe for somebody else. And it's in there. It's a thought of a start. This one is by Primrose Cottage Stitches, and this one is called Hive Rolls. Started this one um, at um, my uh, Ocean City retreat back in April. And this one is just being stitched on a piece of antique white Lugana. I think it's antique white. What color is this? Yeah, Antique White Lugana 28 count with all the called for DMCs. And that's how far I got on this one. I only worked on this one really at the retreat. I think the last day or so that I was at the retreat, I think the last day 
And then that last evening, I, I was stitching on it up in my um, hotel room. So I got a good amount that day stitched on this one. <clears throat> and that, like I said, these Primrose Cottage stitches, they stitch up pretty quick. They're not too, um, got like a lot of crazy fill-in that takes a long time to stitch. This one I might take on my road trip. Maybe. That one's on my radar for that. Oh, this next one is a Blackbird Designs that I did this past um, beginning of the year, this winter. I think I started it in February or something. It's called Winter is Past by Blackbird Designs. It's not a very big one, so this is one that I could, because I picked it up and I was stitching on it um, just a few days and I got like a quarter of it done. This looks like a piece of Be Stitch Me fabric, um, 28 count Lugana in the color Sand Dollar. And I love how it's looking on this fabric. Using the called for over dies. I think it's a lot of weeks dye works, if I remember right. So I got all of that done just on, in a few days. So this um, is one, and I think I was what, stitching on this watching TV in the other room <laughs> with my husband. So uh, if I can get that much done in a few evenings, I don't think it'll take me too, too long to get this one finished. This one shouldn't be hanging around forever in a day, but you never know with me. It's already getting late. Let's see. I'm somewhere I gotta be later. This one is by Shannon Christine. This is Trick or Treat Sampler. It's a little tiny cute sampler. Looks like this. I am stitching this on a piece of 16 count Ada. Follow the call, call for DMCs. Um, I think this is Dirty Ada. And this is how far I am on this one. This is a little one. That's cute. Problem is, is I cut my fabric already small. And I like to work in a Q-snap or whatever, so. But I have a really small nerd hoop that I bought. So I might use that to try to just finish this, this part of the design. <clears throat> and maybe I'll get this one done this fall. Who knows? Get this one off of my whip list because I started this. This was a lunchtime stitch for me when I was working. And I retired two years ago. So, <laughs> time to get that thing finished. This was a new mania start. Um, and I can't show you the chart on this one. It, it doesn't have really a picture. It's called... Um, Hot Cocoa is Calling, and this is by Cherry Hill Stitchery. Yeah. <clears throat> and it's just that really tiny picture there. The rest of it's the chart. So I really can't show that to you. This is on a piece of Ariel 16 Count Ada by Picture This Plus. <clears throat> this is a piece of fabric that I was using for a couple of other things. Like this is where I had started that Snow Village one <laughs> and didn't like it on this fabric. So I switched. That's how far I am on hot cocoa is calling. I got the word snow, the middle of it, the O in it is a snowflake, a big snowflake. So that's how far I am. And then I was starting my By the Bay Needle Arts piece that I had already showed you on there and I started that one on there. Ugh. But I like hot cocoa is calling on here. So that's why that looks funny because I had started two other things on this fabric. And uh, change my mind and all that mess. The next one is Hot Cocoa by Shannon Christine. This is another one I need to finish because I started this back um, over two years ago. It's not that big of a piece. It's just a lot of white stitching and oops, everything sliding. But I'm doing this on a piece of uh, Milk Chocolate 16 Count Ada. With all the call for DMC, and it's not that big. Is this the front? Yep. And that's how far I am. I have not touched this one in a little while. Everything's trying to slide. 
I've got project bags all around me. <laughs> I've got a mess going on here. And they're starting to slide these plastic bags. Um, I'm gonna slide against each other. I'm gonna pulling everything out of this one bin. Oh, this is one that I need to finish this year too. I really do. This is an old ancient whip that um, a friend of mine, Carla, I had, it was out of a magazine. I had thrown away the magazine. I forgot that I was stitching something from that magazine when I was like moving one time. And it was this one. So she sent this to me. She said, I have that magazine. I can send you the chart. So she did. So I appreciate that so much. Because I was had it 90% done. And this one is called Snowy, uh, Snowman Wall Hanging. And it is from the Cross Stitch and Country Crafts, January, February of 19, I think it says 96. There again, I don't have my glasses on. It's really tiny print. But I'm stitching this on a dark navy 16 count Ada. It's either 16 or 18. This might be 18 count. And I got that far on him. And I was showing him and saying, oh, it's a pity I don't have the, the chart to finish him. So she sent that to me. So I need to get um, him finished because he's so cute. And he's been sitting in, in, a, in a project bag for years because this is from 1996 magazine. I probably started it around 1996. Oh, and this piece of paper belongs in this project. Let's don't lose and misplace things again, Vicki. <clears throat> Let me stick that in there really quick. It goes with Hot Cocoa by Chanel Christine. I don't want it. Let me get back in its bag. All right, we're down to the last few. This one is by Little House Needleworks. This is called Lantern Lane. And my hope is to get this one finished this year. Because I've already got the big house done. I'm stitching this one on a piece of 16 count Ada. Um, I'm not sure what color though it is. Oh, maybe I wrote it down. Doo -doo -doo. Lamb's wool. This is a soft lamb's wool. I'm used to them being stiff and scratchy. But here I am on this one. So I don't have a whole lot more. I'm not doing this um, leafy border. I'm not doing down here. I'm ending it where this wall is. So I basically have to just finish that top there and work myself, work, work my way over and finish this side over here, which is alphabet, um, this urn of flowers. You know, I just got, I have this and the top to do. I did the bulk of the stitching. So I just need to finish this one. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can, I think I can. <laughs> finish this one this year, or at least this winter. You know, even if it's a finish in February, you know, because that's when I do a lot of my winter stitching is in the winter. Um, so we'll see. Most of the ones in here are ones that are smaller, that are closer to a finish that I think I can like pick up and just kind of work at and get finished. And this is one of them. Baby, it's cold outside. The heartstring samplery. Not a very big piece. Got the house done. So there's not a whole lot left on this one. I am doing this on um, 16 Count Ada. I'm trying to think of the color. It is Spice by Picture This Plus. So it's a really dark brown color. And this is where I am. So I had to convert like the greens. I picked a brighter green and stuff. Brighter colors to show up on this dark fabric. But it's only that big. I've almost got the whole border. So you can see how big it is. So I got words and a few other little things and finished a little bit of the border and it's done. So this is in this basket because this is, you know, this bin is full of projects that it's like no reason why if I don't pull it, pull it out, work on it for a few days that I can't get them finished. <clears throat> so they're on my radar to work on most of these. See if I can get some of these in this bin finished, you know, this over the next six months. This one is by Little House Needleworks. It's called Hillside Travelers. I had restarted this, but I got a lot done when I restarted it. I sat and I worked on this one for a good, I don't know, five or six days when I restarted it. Um, 
And this one is, uh, I restarted it in January uh, of this year on 32 count cream Lugana. And I'm using a lot of threads for my stash. And this is where I am. So I, I got as much as I already had stitched plus more. Like I didn't have all this stitched down here, this pond with the um, things. And I think a couple more things in there are finished that weren't. So um, I've got this part done. I'm about a quarter of the way done. I still gotta do, you know, this is probably half of it. So I've got that section finished pretty much on this one. Ah, sliding. Everything's gonna be on the floor. So I've got that in here in this bin. I don't think I'll finish this one this year necessarily, but it's another one that's on the smaller end that maybe by next year I can have finished. Now this one was a, a New Year's Eve start, one of my 12 by 12 New Year's Eve starts. And this is a Little House Needleworks, and this one is Fox Inn at Fox River Mill. And I barely got to start. I have the hour you stitched on 12 projects, the last 12 hours of the year up until midnight. And so you get one hour on each project, and that's one hour to start it. And that's, you know, if you have to take a potty break or a phone call or eat your dinner or whatever. So... I only got this far. That's it. Ooh. I'm doing it with the call for colors. And this is on a piece of 16 count Ada in the color. Is the sticker still on this one? Yeah. Lamb's wool. So not very far. Not very far at all. But I wanted to get a start on this one because this one's been kitted and sitting in my stash for a while. And I've been wanting to do that one. This is another New Year's Eve 12 by 12 start. And this is by Bent Creek. This is the begin row. So they spelled out begin by uh, making it larger and bolder through the alphabet. So it says a journey of a thousand miles begins, uh, must begin with a single step. So I got a very tiny start on this because I haven't touched this one since New Year's Eve. And this looks like it's on Heritage, 16 count Heritage Ada. And I have one tree. So that's it. <laughs> that's all I have. One tree out of probably 20 trees there. <clears throat> so it's a start. It is a start. You have to start it to finish it. And I have one last one, and this is another ancient whip that I worked on some this year. So I'm gonna show it. This is my Raspberry Homecoming by um, Told in the Garden. So the same lady who does Lavender and Lace, Marilyn Levitt Emblem. Um, I said she's passed away. Uh, Nora Corbett's mom. She um, designed this one, gosh. This is actually, some of this is handwritten on this chart. 1992 is the copyright that she wrote on here. It's in her handwriting. Like, look at that. These, that's how old this chart is. Um, so Raspberry Homecoming. I had finished Blueberry Homecoming and I don't know what I did with it. I don't know if I gave it away or if it's hiding somewhere, but I haven't found it. This one, I am not sure what I'm stitching this on. This is a 16 count piece of Ada in some kind of um, dark greenish, mossy green color. And that's where I am on this one. So I did pick it up and I worked on it some this year and I finished the barn. I had to do the silo and the fill in the windows and things like that in the barn here. And now I need to go down there and start finishing the people and the raspberry bushes. 
and then see if I can find my blueberry homecoming because that's kind of got me upset that I don't know what happened to that one because I know I stitched it. I finished it. So I don't know what happened to it. That was a really pretty piece. I don't know if I just got rid of it. I don't know. Lost it somehow in a move. I don't know. That is it. <laughs> uh, a little over two and a half hours. I am done. Those between part one and this one, that are those are all my whips. The only things I didn't show you were ancient whips that I have not touched. And um, a couple of things that I wanted to restart, but I haven't. And because um, I think I have two or three things that it's like I want to restart them. Uh, like the blue flower, I have a night walk down. I want to restart uh, early American series. I want to restart. So there's like two or three that I thought, well, I'm not going to show them to you because they're, they're going to be UFO'd because they're going to be restarted at some point. Also, some of my old, old, old whips that I have not touched. And in the past year, since I showed them to you before my last whip parade, I figured why show them because they're sitting in a bin and I'm not touching them yet. Um, some of them are by Stony Creek. Um, I don't know, a couple of old lavender and lace ones. So that is everything. So I wish you guys a happy and well, you know, well summer. Get a lot of stitching done. Have some happy stitching time. Happy time with family and friends. However you're spending your summer, I hope you have a great, great time. And I will see you probably at the end of the summer because I'm going to be super, super, super busy with travel. And I've got a retreat coming up in a couple days. I'll be gone for a few days. And I'm going to hit the road with my mom. And we're actually traveling across country. We're not flying. We're going to drive and see a lot of sites that our great country has to offer. And, um, and meet up with family in different locations and things like that. We've got a lot planned. Going to be gone for a good while. Then I get back and I have another retreat. So... Um, it's probably going to be um, later um, than sooner that, to my next video. But I wish you guys well. And I thank you guys if you stayed it here this long and you watched everything and you saw everything and you didn't judge me on all of the mess that I have. Um, then I thank you so much. <laughs> so I wish you guys well. Love you guys. Bye-bye.